I like to compare uh, the internet with the development of iron because the internet started out as an elite military bureaucratic academic exercise for several uh, uh, decades before it became the kind of global marketplace that it is today. Uh, iron started out as ornaments for uh, uh, palace elites and then uh, a, a century, a few centuries later, as uh, weapons for uh, 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 ruling classes such as the Assyrians. It was several hundred years after that that iron, the most uh, uh, commonplace and robust of metals on earth, uh, found its true human social use as tools in farming and manufactures for ordinary people. Uh, so that's more or less, uh, by examining these uh, analogous uh, technological developments, I'm trying to place uh, us in, 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 in what seems to me to be quite uh, a momentous period of uh, human history. I mean, what is our moment in human history? A lot depends on how far advanced or how primitive or backward we think we are. I mean, I think of us as something like the first digging stick operators on, uh, 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 on their way to inventing agriculture. They had no notion of what they were doing and even less of anticipating Chinese civilization. That, I believe, is more or less our position. It's, it would pay us to be humble about what we can do. Nevertheless, it does seem to me that what we do may have far-reaching consequences. Uh, I believe, therefore, that the, uh, the formation of a new uh, uh, interactive communications network at a global level is comparable in human history to the invention of agriculture and will have as uh, ramifying consequences. In any case, we can now see around us uh, the explosion of markets and new forms of money, of virtual reality, and of what is usually described globalization. Uh, all uh, taking place together, feeding each other uh, in ways that uh, are quite remarkable. I'm not claiming that this is the first time that globalization has occurred. Of course, around 1800 and uh, 1900, uh, uh, the, the palpable sense of a world becoming closer together uh, was, uh, uh, was experienced then. But I would say that what is distinctive about our time is that we have discovered for the first time universal means of communication for the expression of universal ideas. Uh, the world has not been short of universal ideas before, but it has been short of a means of communication adequate to them. Uh, Ever since uh, I came up with this uh, rationale for what I would uh, uh, study, uh, my academic colleagues in particular have said, how can you study the internet? The internet is for an elite, it's a small elite. The mass of humanity is excluded. The world is a terribly unequal place. 85% of the population never comes close to the internet. Uh, isn't it your responsibility as a concerned academic to study them, to consider them? And I, I, I mean, obviously, the way that I have presented the case today suggests that I decided that this was a process which, however limited in its initial application, had very wide uh, implications for human social development, and that I wanted to study it, and that I couldn't or wouldn't uh, make uh, studying the digital divide my principal preoccupation. Even so, uh, I felt guilty enough about uh, this uh, complaint from my colleagues to put an unequal world in the subtitle <laughs> of my uh, book. Uh, what I'm really interested in is how can uh, uh, the new technologies uh, be made more democratic uh, in their social use. Now, the social engine driving all this technological development is usually called capitalism. 
it's surprising to recall that the world was able to do without this term until 1902 when Van Zomba invented it. Um, and it may well be that the word now uh, is past its sell-by date since it refers to so many things and so many people are uh, fixed on uh, uh, versions of what it means that perhaps don't advance this course very strongly. Nevertheless, it is, it has been, and it probably will be for a while, uh, an important uh, 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 question for us to ask. I mean, where in the history of capitalism do we think we are? Where do we place uh, this, uh, um, this moment? And uh, of course, left, I mean, Marxists and others for some time have been talking about late capitalism as if it were about to auto-destruct. And uh, uh, I, I, that's, I think, wished for. It may even be racist in that, uh, in my view, uh, uh, capital accumulation is becoming global for the first time uh, now. And countries like India, Brazil, Russia, China uh, are, uh, 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 for the first time, genuinely threatening the dominance of capitalist development by America and Europe. So, I suspect that capitalism has some way to go uh, 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 and, and as it would, should affect uh, the way we imagine the political possibilities of this moment. In any case, capitalism's historical mission to bring cheap commodities to the masses and to break down the insularity of traditional communities still has some way to go. So with all this in mind, uh, my uh, question as what I would write about became how uh, are the forms of money and exchange uh, uh, changing in the context of the, of the digital revolution? So my next section is about money. This one is going to be even more garbled than the first. I've written 10 articles on money in the last two years and it's very hard for me to see what the big picture is in, in all these little uh, 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 efforts. So excuse me if, it, if it's a bit disjointed, this part. Uh, ours is an age of money. The idea that we live in an age of money, which is in the middle of three uh, stages of human history, was one that was shared by Locke and Marx. Each of them imagined an earlier stage of human history uh, based on the land or a state of nature, uh, which then gave rise to uh, the age of money, which is our own, which is contradictory, but in some ways uh, uh, progressive, and, and laid out as the possibility a future just society, whether it was communism or civil government, uh, which would uh, make do the injustices and inequality of the, of the age of money. Uh, I think that's quite a reasonable uh, 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 way of, uh, of framing uh, human history. But in any case, money for us, especially in the capitalist societies, is a mystery. I mean, it's almost, it is not taught in schools. It's hardly discussed in, uh, uh, in the media. And of course, we're assailed by millions of trivial facts. But if you ask people where in uh, public education or the media they will find an explanation of what money is, where it comes from, why it's so important, these questions are not generally addressed in our society. I mean, most people suppose, I imagine, that it's issued by the government and that the banks have something to do with how you get it. What they don't uh, uh, generally understand is that money is made by each of us signing on a loan. And that uh, signature then becomes the basis for uh, on lending and developing various forms of credit. 